Frustration. Yes, frustration. It will happen. And you as a composer better know how to deal with it. Or better yet, just avoid it altogether. Writing for live orchestra versus only scoring with samples in mind. So for those of you who have thought about, well, should I score using my samples knowing that a live orchestra is not going to play it? Or should I score with the assumption that it's going to be played by a live orchestra? So let me save you some frustration. Anybody just now starting out beginning, you know, amateur level, uh, or even those who are can can say they're established a little bit, have have some work under their belt, but haven't had a major budget full length feature film or anything like that should not be concerned with writing for a live orchestra. Don't worry about writing for live orchestra. You're just starting out, you're fresh in the game. Don't even concern yourself with writing music for a live orchestra or live musicians. If you do the research and look at what it takes to be associated with a project that has a live orchestra, you'll quickly realize that due to budget, you're not gonna have the money to pay them. So why are you worrying about wasting time writing for them? Time frame, it's a highly pressurized environment. You're not that experienced enough to even have to deal with writing for live musicians and recording live musicians. So why even stress yourself out over that? Why even waste your time? The reason why you won't be able to pay them is because the, the jobs that you do get aren't gonna be paying you much, if, if anything at all. If you're still in that, that stage of accepting or, or doing work for free, which I don't recommend after you do your first one or two projects for free just for experience, to get, to get some experience under your belt, after that first one or two, I don't recommend at all working for free. But you won't be able to pay live musicians because you won't have the money, you won't have that in the budget, so why even work, bruh? So why even worry about that? I can't stand other drivers. But anyway, if the director or the production company doesn't have the money in the budget to pay a live orchestra, who 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 you think going going, going to be responsible for paying them? Exactly. So don't worry about you know all of that. If if they wanna, if the production company wants to front twenty, thirty thousand dollars. For a live orchestra, okay, fine. Then we then we can talk. Then we can talk writing for an orchestra. You want to know that way ahead of when you accept doing the project. So if you know well in advance that they, that you're gonna have the money for a live orchestra, that's when you want to be concerned about writing for a live orchestra. If you're not on a big budget feature, chances are you won't be writing for a live orchestra. So the time it's gonna take you to actually go from beginning scoring to big budget live orchestra scoring can be years. So why focus on that right now? Why waste any time thinking about that right now? No, all you need to be concerned with is using the samples that you have and writing according to the samples that you have. Don't worry about articulations and things like that based off of uh, uh, it going to orchestration for a live musician. Just let your doll do the work for you. Let your, your digital samples and your sample library do the work for you. At best, you may get one or two musicians that you know who will be willing to play for you for free. If that's the case, then sure, go ahead and write for them, but if not, don't worry about using live musicians and if you get a good sample library you won't have to worry about live musicians anyway it, it was live musicians who played the samples for the good sample libraries this is why i stress the importance of researching the sample libraries that you get putting the money into the sample libraries you get because you if, if you can get a sample, a great sample library that has used live musicians to record it, 
that takes the place of writing for your live musicians. So you focus all your energy on creating the best music you can with your sample library versus trying to actually write for a live person who's going to play. I myself used uh, East West Hollywood Symphonic Orchestra. Libraries like that are great, excellent. They, they were recorded by real musicians playing real instruments. When you sit down and, and take the time to write a piece of music, write it how you want to write it, how you want it to sound, period. Don't, don't waste any time thinking about, oh, well, a, a real musician you know, we play it like this, so I gotta make sure I, I, I spend five hours on orchestration. No, no, no. All you're gonna do is give yourself a unneeded headache. Spend what, what you need to spend to get your sample library. And then just focus all your effort and energy on creating the best music you can using samples and not worrying about or being concerned with, oh, well, how's this gonna sound, you know, on, on, on the, the stage? or in, in, the, in the recording session or when live pray, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Don't even worry about getting to that right now. That's not where you're at right now. Right now, you just, you in your basement in your drawers by yourself in the dark writing with your sample library. That's where you are and that's where you need to, that's what you need to be concerned with. Nothing else. Because I'm telling you, you you'll stress yourself out caring about something that doesn't even matter right now it doesn't even pertain to you right now not at this level not you just you're, you're you're a fresh fish you need to worry about the things that are pertinent right now and right now the only thing that matters is getting a great sounding sample library that you can work with anything else it, it, is for later so don't waste your time effort or energy over that write your scores using the samples that you have based off of the sample library, not based off of a live musician playing it. In other words, don't write for live musicians when you're first starting out. Most of you might not even understand uh, the how to write for live musicians, so don't even worry about that. That's just a barrier that can prevent you from sitting down and creating, a needless barrier at that. All you need to be concerned with is coming up with, with good melodies, uh, good themes, good chord progressions, you know, know your instruments, know your sound, spend all your time devoted to your sample library. Know where all your sounds are so you don't have to waste time trying to find a particular sound when, when you're in the middle of creating. Spend your free time on that or your study time on that. Don't spend any time worrying about well, I gotta make sure I articulate this, you know, for a live musician and all that foolishness. No, you do all the, the orchestration and stuff yourself using your dog. That's all you need to be concerned with. Anything other than that, you just wasting time. And that's just the basic facts. That's just the truth of, of the matter. Sit down, take the time, create your scores using the sample library that you had. Don't worry about writing for a live orchestra for now. That's, that's years down the line, if ever. Most of us will probably never write for or, or have to write music for a live orchestra because a lot of us just deal with independent films. And believe me, they're not paying for live orchestras. So don't, don't worry about that kind of stuff. Save yourself a needless headache. So I hope you take this advice and, and let it help you you know, to save yourself from a little bit of frustration that you may start to encounter thinking that you have to do one thing when you really don't. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified when I drop more videos and feel free to check out the website jamiecomansmusic.wix.com slash composer. And until then, keep creating.